Thanks for tuning in to the Wood Warped YouTube channel. This week, we unbox, assemble, and go through the features of this latest shop upgrade. Kind of a spoiler alert, this is what it's going to be about. I did this video earlier before the holidays, and in the editing process, I thought maybe it might be just a tad too long. So I thought I would create this little intro video for those people who might like to just get to the meat of the saw and see what it's like, see the features and benefits. So if you don't want to watch all that unboxing stuff in the beginning, jump ahead to this spot right here, right where I'm pointing, and uh, you can get right to the meat of everything. But if you like the unboxing stuff, by all means, please watch it all the way from, from the beginning. I would greatly appreciate that. So thanks again for tuning in and enjoy the video. Welcome back to the Woodwork Workshop. An exciting day here as we have a shop upgrade underneath this blanket. I know I can't contain myself any longer, so let's take a look at what it is. That's right. That's right. It's a DeWalt table saw, a job site table saw specifically. Now, anybody that's been watching me on social media and YouTube, you know I have a shop. Obviously, I'm in it right now, and I have a table saw. So why do I need a portable table saw? Well, I probably have mentioned a few times on some of my videos that I also run a part-time handyman business since I've been retired. And one of the deficiencies that I've come across as part of my handyman business is I do a lot of carpentry and I really need a way to be able to rip stuff and cut stuff um, on job sites when I have a project that requires it. So I thought this would be a great addition to my business. So uh, that's kind of how I'm sold it to my wife that way. But um, I think it'll be a good productive tool that, um, that I could use. I do haul around my miter saw and that thing's just as heavy. So this is the DeWalt, obviously. You can see the box, black and yellow. It's the 7491RS. Now they do make a few different saws. This one happens to be the 10 inch. Now if you're probably reading along with some of this, maybe you read Spanish, uh, but some of the stats are down here as well. Um, I don't know if I'll remember them all, but we'll get to that in a bit, because pretty soon we're gonna open up this box. But it's the nice thing I like about it is it's still a 10 inch blade and I use 10 inch blades on my table saw. So I figured, well, I can use some of my good Forester blades and a few other things uh, with this saw as well. Um, it has the same arbor size for uh, the blade to fall on. And I should be able to use my dado stack as well. Uh, I just got to be careful on how far I, I go with my data stack. Um, I liked it because well, the 10 inch was one thing. It's got 15 amps, which means it's going to have quite a bit of power. Um, well, it draws 15 amps, so it's going to you know, generate quite a bit of power. But it's also got a pretty nice wide fence on it. And, you know, it's, I think it's 32 and a half inches or something like that. And it's a nice rack and pinion fence. If you've ever done... Uh, you know, any evaluation of some of these saws. And I trust me, I've been looking at a gazillion videos and reading a tons of articles. And this is the one that everybody keeps gravitating to. Uh, there's a few other ones. The saw stop one is also pretty nice too from what I gathered, but it's a little bit out of my budget. So the reason I got this one now is because uh, one of the hardware stores that I like to frequent had a, you know, a Cyber Monday sale actually it wasn't even cyber it was in person and i think this saw was like pretty close to 20 percent off so it's the best price i've seen on it in a while so i thought well i'm not going to pass it up i realize uh, you know it's a little bit before christmas but well, no sense i might as well just treat myself something huh but it's got a uh, 32 and a half inch fence uh, the overall table size is about 21 inches by 26 inches, roughly thereabouts. Um, it's got some nice onboard storage for some of the gizmos that go with it. 
Um, it's got a nice dust collection port and a few things like that. So the biggest thing when you're a, a guy like me that goes out and does work at people's houses is it's on a roller stand. So I can wheel it into my truck and uh, haul it around the job site. This thing weighs 113 pounds. And I know I've said it a gazillion times, but anything that you buy in the woodworking business translates to heavy stuff. I've talked about it over and over again. This is no different either. So, you know, it, it's heavy. But it, heavy is good, I think, because it just means it's going to be more stable. It's not going to be flopping around too much, things like that. So 113 pounds, I think that's about 51 kilograms for my Canadian friends. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and start opening this thing up and uh, seeing what it's about. I had to lift this thing up here onto my table by myself and I'm not, I'm an old guy and I'm not a strong guy. So you should have seen that, that was a little comical. Anyway, let's go ahead and start opening it and uh, maybe we'll play a little soft music to kind of keep you lured in. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. I can't sing anything because uh, I think we'll violate any copyright protections. Boxes in boxes. All right. They put tools in these boxes because I think it's a whole engineering effort just to figure out how all these pieces go into a box. There's the manual. We'll need that. Right, here's a box of other stuff. Or, ooh, something uh, breakable in there. Well, this looks like it could be the actual saw itself. Nice. The rest of it is the stand. I'm guessing what's in the other box in there is going to be the stand. Ooh, there she is. Well. Stick with me, I'm sure it'll get better. I sure wish the wall was a sponsor of my channel. I sure could have used them to provide me with one, but I bought this with my own hard earned money. So I guess I can give it a totally unbiased review right nice what's in this little box looks like uh got the dust collector and blade guard and what do we have in here The, uh, looks like the miter fence. Kind of a little disappointing, I'll say. You know, I've got a um, I've got a nice Incra miter gauge that I'm or miter fence, whatever you want to call it. That um, eh, hopefully there's a way to take some of that slap out of there. I don't know. Let's see. I figure out a way around that. But this is nice. This actually reminds me of, um, if you watch my uh, shop, my shop tour video, I talked about how I bought a saw stop uh, guard. And the reason I bought the saw stop guard was because it had the nice delect, the dust collection port on it. I had to modify it to make it fit my, uh, my table saw. But I actually kind of like it. So if you got some older table saws, you got those that old fence that really doesn't do much, barely keeps your fingers out of the blade. Um, but yeah, looks pretty good. So we'll uh, think the other piece. What I'm guessing is in there in the other box is going to be probably 
the fence. At least that's manageable. Because it's an unboxing video, let's move this off here. I do kind of like the fact that it's got the one handle there, but I'm guessing it does have a gripper handle over here too. So. board yet uh, pretty exciting at least if you're gonna go buy one of these you'll have some idea of what to expect when you unbox it right Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. wheels actually the wheels are kind of nice they're really pretty heavy these aren't your typical, the hubs are plastic, but these things got some mass to them. They must be, I don't know, a pound or two. I mean, they really feel pretty girthy, which is kind of nice versus those uh, little pedal car wheels that you might get on some of these things. So yeah, that I'm impressed with. The manual we don't need. Lots of... Uh, Parts, I'm sure we're going to need. Right here, more parts. I always like it when they give you these wrenches. Huh? Are those things useful? So, it's like, a, it's like a go handle. Oh, I see. There it is. I was kind of wondering where the fence was. This is all, this is all stand. But I was thinking it was the stand and the fence. It doesn't look like the stand's going to be too hard to put together. And these things, the fence was 113 pounds. This stuff is not lightweight metal. Some of the welds aren't the best, but I'm not a good welder either. But it's got a lot of beef to it, so. And here's the other go handle, probably. If you want to watch me put the stand together, I think what I'm going to do is put that in a separate video, so. You should be able to find that on my channel if you really care. But let's cut away and uh, I'll get these boxes cleared up. And then we'll hopefully have the saw on the stand. And we can talk a little bit more about some of the features that we see in there. So be back in a minute. We're back. We got the stand all put together over there. Now we're going to mate the stand with the saw. So the first thing it says to do is to put it table top down on a non-marring surface. Now, I think that means not scratching surface. The interesting thing when you look underneath this is you see that this table actually is a is a some type of die cast aluminum, I guess. At first I thought it was plastic because it kind of felt like that. But it's, it's actually some type of pot metal of some sort. And you can kind of see um, the motor assembly. It looks like it's put together pretty well, pretty simple. They've done a good job of engineering the undercarriage side of it. So uh, let's go ahead and mate the, the stand up with the sock. Where? <laughs>
put the nuts on this side in a tough spot. So, just saying to Walt, not sure why. All right. It's kind of smart when the uh, these manufacturers pick one set of nut and bolt sizes to use throughout. I think cars are getting that way too, right? I'm guessing. I don't know. Smart. Real smart. I sure hope it's shallow enough to fit my truck. Got one of those uh, canvas covers on the back, so I wonder. Look at that. So, that's pretty compact, I would say. Doesn't look like much. So, let's get this thing flipped over. Next scene, you'll see this thing sitting on the floor, and we'll kind of walk through the rest of it. A job site whistle shouldn't be copyright protected because I just made it up. But you never know with these YouTube things. You just never know. All right, there we have it. Got her all assembled. Got it on the stand. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? I would have to say my overall impressions from the unboxing to kind of just looking at it overall, it looks pretty good. I think I like a lot of uh, what they've done with it. And uh, I would have to say I'm pretty happy with my purchase. So, as you kind of see, when you roll onto your job site like that, that's kind of how you set it up, you know, you just kind of the wheel end, you flop, you flop down the other end, set up your legs. Um, it really isn't too heavy when you lift it in that particular fashion. I think it's like, uh, let's say 103 pounds. I don't remember how many kilograms that is for my Canadian friends, but uh, it's a little hefty. I will say that between the last segment when I put the stand together and I put the saw on the stand, and now actually some time has lapsed. Um, I actually had to go work on a project and I actually needed this for that project. So I've got a little bit of firsthand experience with it now, um, which I will say it was good. I mean, I hauled it out the stairs here. It went pretty good. Got it into my truck. The good news is, it fits in my truck. The height, when this is all folded up, is just enough to get under my tuxedo liner, which is one of those roll-up um, kind of pseudo, I don't even think it's leather, but it's like a vinyl, I guess it would be. The vinyl um, kind of Velcroed cover that rolls up. And when I roll that back, put this in, it does roll over the top of it, which is what one concern that I was gonna have was once I got it in there, would it fit the way that I wanted to? So this is kind of how you would roll onto the job site when you put the legs on. Everything's put away. And one of the beauties of this saw, I would say, is the fact that 
everything's got a place. So everything kind of tucks into a specific spot. They've done a pretty good job, I would say, of kind of thinking through, you know, what happens with all the parts and the pieces, you know, when you want to wheel it from one spot to another and how do you kind of keep it all intact so you don't lose them, so they don't fall off. Even as simple as like this throat plate, it's got a little lock on it. Of course, any normal table saw, you know, wouldn't, and this would fall out and four days later, you'd realize it came off somewhere, but it locks on there. So that's just one simple innovation that they thought of. And maybe the other guys that do it have thought about that as well. But kind of walking around, um, starting off, if you could do a job site like this, the first thing you do is unpack it, right? So here you have it. Now, the first innovation is the storage of the fence. So it's here. You just flip these two levers here, and it unlocks that way. You flip it over, walk over to this side of the saw, and there's a couple there's a couple spots here, and I'll kind of explain what those are. The front ones locate the fence for when you're going to be cutting things that are narrow all the way out to 25 inches wide. The second set that you'd hook onto is for when you want to go all the way out to like 33 inches on a cut. So depending on your cut, most of the time you're going to kind of have it on the first uh, set of lock-on knobs here. You flip it down there, then you take your levers, and you're locked and loaded, okay? Now, a couple other things regarding this auxiliary, I guess we'll call it an auxiliary fence. It's a flip over fence. Normally it comes in just like this, but when you flip it over, what it does is it opens up this alleyway right here, just with more room. So when you're cutting really narrow pieces, you know, so it really, if you were to normally, you know, slide this up there and be cutting a one inch board, it's really tight through here. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. But if it were away just a little bit more, you know, you still got a fence here, but it's lower profile. It allows you to get a push stick or something like that. Maybe your hand. You want to still be careful uh, where you're putting your hand uh, with that, you know, when, when you're actually ripping something down. So that's pretty cool. The other thing they did was they made this nice little, they give you this little push stick, which is pretty decent. But this just has a little holster here. You lock her down in there. And again, not going to fall out when you're using it in transport, things like that. And then if you want to use it on the wider fence, if you're going all the way up to like 33 inches, you set it on the second set and put it there. And you can slide this baby all the way out to 33 inches. So what they have here, because there are two different settings, there's the front and the back. They have two tape measures here that account for that offset. So the inside yellow is anywhere from zero to 25 inches. And then the white strip is from eight inches all the way up to 33 inches. So depending on which um, particular uh, carriage you have this located in, front or back, will really kind of dictate uh, which, which ruler that you use. Now, I have gone through uh, some of the calibration, some basic calibration of adjusting, um, you know, this sight glass and trust that it's going to be accurate. And then you just use this lever on this side and lock it down. Then it doesn't go anywhere. So, again, more on the fence is what they use is a, a rack and pinion style where they got teeth on both sides that are aligned perfectly so that when you rotate the uh, the fence here with this knob, and you can kind of watch this little sight glass and kind of dial it into exactly where you want it to be. But the beauty of the rack and pinion is you got the front and the back that are perfectly aligned. Going around to this side, again, they have the coil that's all wrapped up here with a nice cord keeper. And they have the nice plug that has the little indent on it so you can lock it onto itself. 
and it's not flopping all over the place. The other thing that they do is they have a little spot here for um, for the saw blade uh, wrenches. And on the saw blade wrenches, which is kind of cool, what they do is they, they provide a couple holes here that are used for aligning these two carriage locations here. Take it off here real quick. You can see there's two, let me rotate them back a little bit. You can see there are two black, I'll call them carriage bolts or whatever. Um, so if you ever do have to recalibrate that and you adjust the front one, then this alignment on here, which has two spots, will automatically help you align the second one. So if you ever do have to realign this, they kind of got a built-in little bit of alignment tool there uh, to help you through that process. But I didn't have to do anything with it. It came from the factory uh, in a good spot, so didn't really have to mess with it at all. So they give you these two, you know, uh, blade wrenches, which are cool, and those just store away real handy. Again, so you don't lose them. Let's slide them back in here. On the back side of that is a little holster for the miter fence that they provide. I think I kind of talked about the miter fence earlier, and we'll get into some of the pluses and the cons. Uh, and I did use this miter fence that came with it. Um, it's just purely, I'll say manual, where you really just got to gotta make sure that you've got it dialed into where you want. You probably do want to still, if you're using this miter, you probably do want to check it with some type of uh, right angle uh, square, just to make sure you got it right. I still need to put a board on here. It would be, you know, to put a wider, uh, you know, support board on there or support fence on there as well. The one thing that you will notice, you kind of hear that rattle. There really isn't any adjustment to take up the slop in there. Now, I used it because I didn't have anything else on my job site. Um, but it really did the trick. And it ended up being as square as I needed it. So that was pretty good. This way. So I don't know if I'll always use the fence that they, the miter fence that they provide. So that's that's it on this side. Coming around to the front then, starting with the start stop switch here. Of course, green, that's the go button. Uh, right directly below that is a red button. And actually it's operated by this paddle switch. One other thing they did because, probably because this is more of a job site saw, is they have a little door that flips down and you can put a, a long arm padlock in here and lock out the saw. So if you're kind of worried that somebody's going to come along and maybe hurt themselves on it, maybe you don't want anybody using your stuff, you can lock it out. So that's kind of neat. They got that little door on there as well. You got the crank here, which, uh, you know, kind of raises and lowers it. You can kind of hear the gear mechanism in that. And I think it goes up to, I'll have to put it on the screen, but to maybe two and a half inches, maybe three inches. I forget what the total height is, but it cranks up pretty high. Keep in mind, it's a 10 inch blade, which is nice because if a lot of you have saw blades, like I use some Forrester blades and I could use them on the saw if I wanted to. And um, so they would use the same saw blade. I think it's got the same arbor for the saw blades too. Now for the angle, what you need to do is just slide this lever over and then the whole uh, unit pivots, the whole arbor pivots back and forth. The only real challenge with it is if you're, you know, it doesn't on like some major table saws where you've got a dial and you can kind of just tweak it a little bit as you go. This one, you kind of have to hold it on the degree marker that you want. Like if you wanted 25 degrees, you gotta get it just right. And, and see, it's just very kind of tough to get it dialed into that one little degree. It will go back to zero and it will go to 45 really easy. So because there's bump stops there, but if you wanna do anything in between, you gotta hold it and lock it down. So you need both hands. So that kind of takes care of the front of the saw here. Here, like I said, is where you would uh, dial in, you know, your distance of this. Or else you can just take it and move it like that. 
and there's a lever on the right hand side bang you're all locked down there too coming around to this side there's a nice little spot here i show some b-roll footage here but here is the uh the nice finger preventer cutter offer that they give you and one of the things that they do again i thought it was a good innovation was that they provide you with this quick release mechanism. So on this side of the saw, there is a lever that you pull out, and you could slide this in where it belongs. And it's a little dark right down in there right now. Put it on there, and then it's locked in place. So you don't need to unbolt anything. It's a quick release mechanism that will then have that as well. So I thought they did a really cool job with that. And on the back side, they have a little hook here. I don't know if you see it, but they also provide you with an anti-kickback device, which also locks down here underneath the, the bench. And it's got a own little carriage there. But then you could just put this right on the back of um, like that. So now your little anti-kickback devices are on there. And you can have them on or off if you want, depending on what you're doing. If you just want this riving knife on there as well. There's one also inside the saw if you just want to run it open guarded and just run the riving knife on it. So that's pretty handy. So these things, again, everything on this saw has a spot. So, and eventually, I would hope that I will not lose anything, but... They do a they do a good job to try to make sure that you don't. So I'd have to say that's really good there too. On the back, you can't see it from that angle, but there is a two and a half inch ductwork. And I gotta tell you, I was cutting some stuff on site. Five feet out. Uh, they did a good job with that as well. One thing in there is, if I were to show you the top down view, is the whole area around the blade is sealed off with uh, some metal mechanics, and there's some canvas in there that keeps all the saw from just going out all the sides. So again, they did a pretty good job of trying to think through how do we contain saw, how do we direct it out the back. Um, I really found you know a lot of that and. All my mess was contained to five feet behind the saw. Um, so you could, you should probably put some type of dust collector on there. Uh, maybe just a portable vacuum. That would probably help as well. So let's see, we talked about that. And again, you know, for, for portability, you know, you just take this off. You're wrapping up at the end of the day. Slide her down here and Hook it on the underside, flip those down, maybe kind of get it in a happy spot there, lock it down, and you're good to go there. Everything else, if you have it put away properly, then is, is good to go, you know, from that perspective. So I think it kind of takes it around. When I talked about earlier about loading it into my truck, it happens to be just the right amount of height where when you wheel it up to it, uh, there's a couple little skid bars, I'll call them, that kind of set on the tailgate and maybe almost hook onto the tailgate. And you could lift it up then at that point and use some mechanical advantage to get it up into the truck. So it is, you know, even for a wuss like myself to haul this thing around and to put it in and out of my truck, actually went pretty good. I didn't feel like I was out of control at any point with it at all. The wheels were pretty good. The only thing I think I mentioned earlier was that if they were a little bit bigger diameter, if you're going up steps that have a little nose on them, these wheels will catch on that nose. Now, you know, is that it's not a showstopper for me as far as that goes. Um, but I do appreciate you watching. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, please, you know, like this video if you thought it was worthwhile and had some some type of uh, entertainment value. Uh, please share it with a friend, you know, share it with a dog, share it with a cat, share it with grandma, share it with whoever. Get the word out and 
you know, try to grow my channel as much as I can. And most importantly, I would appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button because that really kind of helps the algorithm. As I see more and more people do subscribe, I, it breeds more and more views. So, you know, even if you don't watch it that often, you know, maybe still subscribe. Um, I don't know what my cadence is going to be on my videos going forward. I'm trying to feel my way through that as I have time. I'm a part-time retired guy and part-time handyman and part-time YouTuber. So I'm trying to see what I can make of this particular channel. So anything you could do to support that would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, you know, as I always say, you know, let's get back to making. Let's get back to using our hands and our brains and uh, instead of buying stuff, let's make it, right? So until next time, I'll see you later.